All right, so we're gonna continue once again week number two officially of Kingdom Keys. Um, before I do that, I want to take a moment to make a special prayer for a my mom's uh, amazing, very uh, lovely neighbor. I, I had a the the privilege and the honor to speak to her this morning. Uh, she's 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 going through a rough time. Uh, she suffered a, a heart attack. Don't know if it was, it was a it, it might have been a minor heart attack. Obviously, you know she drove herself to the to the ER and and she she's now in in in, in the care of the doctors and they're doing a lot of tests and they're they're coming up with some answers for her and um, and speaking to my mom, you know she's extremely nervous. Was extremely nervous. I could hear it in her voice, and uh, I was able to speak life to her. I made a prayer for her and I spoke in behalf of, first of all, in behalf of the Lord and, and all this beautiful community that we're going to continue to pray, okay? Um, she's in this situation, right? It's a very difficult one. I know that some of you have been through that path where you have found yourself, you know, you know, completely out of control, right? Where you just, you don't have control and your body... Uh, reacts a certain way sickness comes over your body and I just reminded her I reminded her that the Word of God says that by his stripes we are healed that's what the Word of God says that by his stripes we are healed and it doesn't measure listen to this Xavier it doesn't measure how small or how big the sickness is the Bible says that it is by his stripes that we are healed mm -hmm. so his blood covers everything and it's up to the people of God it's up to uh, the saints, right? Uh, it's up to us to stand together, to pray, to agree. Um, today, you know, uh, I hear my my, my father-in-law says this a lot. You know, today's for her, and, and tomorrow could could be for for one of us. And I hope that that's never the case. But today, we got to stand for her, okay? Uh -huh. and, uh, she doesn't have a husband. Her husband passed away uh, some years back, and so she she felt somewhat, like I said, uh, nervous. However. Um, I reminded her that my mom is 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 an angel sent from the Lord. Um, anybody that knows my mom, you're blessed if she's if she's on your side. She it's just a blessing. Uh, she has this this way of making you feel like everything is gonna be fine. She's four foot ten, but she makes you feel like she's a giant and she's got you. And and I could hear in in, in Blanca's voice that she felt so safe. She felt so safe in the presence of my mom. And, and so we just need to believe for her. It's a very tough situation. Um, but I reminded her that the word of God, um, you know, is true, that it's going to come to pass, that God's promises are yes and amen. His blessings are yes and amen. And we're going to believe just like we're believing for you, Xavier. You know, uh, we're going to continue to believe that the Lord yeah. is going to raise up Blanca and that God is, is giving her a testimony. The Lord's been calling her. And I haven't been able to tell her that. The times that I see her, um, you know, I, I, I wear a prophetic hat. I can't take it off. I really can't. I try to, but uh, once, you know, once I see something in the spirit, I'm, I, I go, I say it. I, 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 I minister and I tell somebody when I feel something. And I just haven't been able to, to tell her, but the Lord has a plan for her. And, and this is an attack. This is a counterattack of the enemy. And he's afflicting her body. She's been through a lot of trauma in her life. Um, but it's going to end in the name of Jesus. As long as you agree Amen. with me, it's Amen. Gonna end. I believe that it's going to end. And, and, and I'm so grateful that she, Amen. once again, has mom and dad right next to her. Literally. What a blessing. <laughs> yep. What a blessing to have, you know, Christ, you know, uh, faith-filled, Holy Spirit-filled people living right next to her uh, to keep her in prayer. So, um, if you'll remind me her last name, but her first name is Blanca. Flores. Blanca Flores. Okay. So families, would you, would you, would you, uh, keep her in prayer? Okay. Would you keep her in prayer? We're going to, we're going to make yes. her prayer and, and we're going to declare healing over her. And yes. In the name of Jesus. And I'm uh, recording this, so it'll be good to give her something to listen to. Listen. Her and uh, we just want to let her know that we love her. I know that all of you don't know her except for my parents and myself, but she's a lovely, lovely lady. And uh, the Lord has his hand on her. So, Father, we just yeah, want to come Jesus. together in agreement tonight. Okay. 
Jesus. We want to come, Father, into agreement and declare your word. Your name. Your word has has uh, has yeah. faithful God has declared healing over the bodies of those who are afflicted. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I thank you for your blood. I thank, thank you for being the Christ. I thank you for the affliction for your love. Them. And you did it, Father, to heal us from our body. So as the church we have you. together, we unite Holy Spirit, one mind we have you. one accord, believing in full Don't healing come. for Blanca Flores tonight. Oh, can come. That you bring regulation to her heart. That you restore her back to your original Would you restore design. her body? That you put the doctors in your hands. Would you restore her Every nurse who's restore attending her. Spirit, God. Lord Father, that you uh, in Jesus cover name. them, that you give them wisdom and knowledge as they treat we ask you, God. Thank you for medical personnel. We thank you for hospitals. We thank you for medicine. Knowing that whatever we for, ask. Uh, for the professionals that are, that are taking care of her today. But I'm thankful for my parents that are the hands and the feet Anything of we Christ ask for this amazing woman. God, so I declare God. healing. We declare healing tonight. And I declare peace healing. that surpasses all understanding. I declare. Cover her. Pray. Lord, in the prayer, we pray for Xavier. Lord, we pray that Xavier. healing over his body is... Uh, that, that that healing takes place completely over his body. Thank you. Know, Father, that his MRI on his on his brain is is good. It's clear. His head, Lord, it's clear. Yes, Lord. We're waiting for another exam, Lord. But we believe. Yes, Lord. His results are going to be. Yes, we'll be negative. Your testimony. We believe that healing is believe upon him, and we cancel cancer out in the name of Jesus. It doesn't in belong to the sons of God. By the blood of the Lamb. I thank you for healing over this community, Lord Father. And I Amen. thank you for the miracles the that you are doing. Yes. Yes, Lord, you I are. pray for my Father's health, Lord Jesus. Yes. I just pray yes. that thank you, you Lord. minister to his body. Yes. Lord Jesus, that you put your hand on his body, that you bring thank complete you. healing to my, my Father's body as well. My wife, who's, you know... Uh, under the weather, Sister Key, yeah. and those, Lord Jesus, that are experiencing Hallelujah. that kind of sickness. We cover them tonight. Hallelujah. Cover us. Of Jesus. Lord. Amen. Would you say amen? Would you love you? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for amen. helping me pray. Amen. amen. Thank you so much for helping me pray. All right. How many are ready? You ready for me? Amen. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Kingdom Keys. It was such a eye open. Uh, what is it called? It was an eye opening session. Week number one. I'm skipping the Pastor Mario and Adriana session, but I'm saying week one was an eye opening session. We talked about you know the kingdom, uh, the kingdom rule, right? And as we continue to uh, evolve in the teaching, as I continue to broaden the teaching, okay, uh, I usually take about one or two different sessions, guys, uh, to teach you a little bit about the kingdom rule, the kingdom principles. So that way, when we start to release keys, okay, as we start to teach you on the keys. So remember, um, this was already stated to everybody. A key will open and un and lock. So a key will unlock and lock. Okay, always remember that. And so the kingdom functions in that capacity. The kingdom will always function, okay, with a key. There's a key to everything. Jesus always used parables. Jesus always used principles. Jesus always taught the disciples, okay? He always taught his disciples, the ministry of the disciples, okay? They weren't apostles yet, but he taught them by using, once again, by using kingdom keys. And Jesus and his mission was to bring the kingdom of God and establish the kingdom of God on this earth. Does anybody have any questions on that? Jesus' ministry. The Bible talks about Jesus healing. The Bible talks about Jesus opening the eyes of the blind, opening the ears of those who can't hear. He cast out demons. Okay? There was not a city that he did not walk into, Xavier, and didn't clean it out. Okay? Jesus' ministry was manifested in all of those miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus never came to the earth to establish a religion. Never. 
you will never find that Jesus in his scripture, in the scriptures, okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament, he never came to establish religion, okay? I'm going to give you some homework. And this homework, I've given it to uh, to students of mine that I that I have taught about the kingdom. When you take Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which is the four main gospels, where you see them chronicle the ministry of Jesus, okay? This is where you find the ministry of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Take a highlighter or Google it and ask the question either to, to, to Google AI, whatever you want, and say, how many times is the word kingdom uh, is the word kingdom uh, written in the four gospels? Okay, that's your homework. And then the second question you're going to ask Google is you're going to say, how many times does the word church or religion, how many times is the word church and religion used in the four gospels? Okay, so the kingdom, okay, and then we're talking about the word church or the, yeah, the word church or religion. Let me make sure that I'm clear on something so that you don't take this out of context. I am all about the church of the living God. In fact, you are the church, okay? The Bible says that you are the church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the living God. You are the church. When you think about church, you might think building. You might think establishment. And that's fine too. But if there was a building and it had no, no, no God in it and it had no people in it, it would just be a building. We are the church. We we compose of the church. Does that make any sense? So when, <clears throat> whenever I talk about the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, which is us. Okay? And by no way, shape, or form am I saying that the church is not important. If anything, the church is very important, which is why we gather, which is why the saints come together, which is why there's order and protocol. There's ministry, right? then there's the leader, there's a head of the church. I mean, there's the church is very important. Now, religion is definitely something that is that opposes of the kingdom. So it's not the kingdom against the church. Okay? So I want to I want to hear you say amen that you understand that. It's not the kingdom amen versus the church. That's amen. not the, that's not what we're teaching. What we're teaching is the kingdom versus, when I say versus, is that the kingdom must overrule religion. Because religion is the most, religion is the most racist thing that exists. And you're probably like, wow. Okay? Because in a snapshot, religion says that Jesus is very exclusive. Religion says that you have to do all of these things in order for you to come before the Lord. Right. The kingdom makes Jesus inclusive. The kingdom says, don't you don't have to go fix all those things. Because yeah. Jesus has come and he has fulfilled the law of the prophets. So oh, whereas man. the Old Testament, there was 600 and I think 33-ish, you might have 637. Uh, how many laws were written? 633, something like that. I may be wrong. You can go back and Google that. In 613. The, 613. Thank you, Sister Nicole. I was close. Yep. But in the New Testament, guys, Jesus came and he fulfilled the law and he gave, he did it with 10. Because it's impossible for you to live up to 613 laws. That is impossible. We would never make heaven, man. We would never come close to the Lord. But when Jesus came, Jesus fulfilled the laws of the prophets. He was the prophet. He came and he established the kingdom. He came, right? And with the Ten Commandments, in which six of them talks about honoring each other, and four of them talk about honoring him. But in everything, you are to... And, and all the Ten Commandments, you honor God. I'm teaching you something. Go back in Leviticus and see that. There's Ten Commandments that were given to Moses. 
And in those ten, six of them are that you are to honor one another. The very first one is honor your father and your mother. <laughs> okay? So if you read those, you'll see that, that God established the Ten Commandments. Six of them honor each other and four honor Him. All of them honor God, but He was very... Uh, he, he, he was very... Uh, how can I say it? There was a distinction as to who you're going to honor and how. Okay? All right. So the 613 you know, laws were difficult to accomplish. So when I talk about the kingdom, okay, Jesus in his ministry, we talked about this two weeks ago, that, that God established Adam to be in the Eve, excuse me, in the Eden. He established man to be in the Eden, okay? He established man to be in the Eden so that he can govern the Garden of Eden, how God has, is governing heaven. Does everybody understand that? And I'm going to read scripture to that. Okay. Then out of the man, he puts the man to sleep. And out of the man, he pulls the woman. And so the word woman was established by Adam. Adam named her woman. Because you take that in context and it's a, it, it's the woman is defined as the womb man. So out of the womb, right? came the woman. That's why you are called a woman for those of you that are women. Because it wasn't good for Adam to be by himself. So God gave him a partner. Okay. So now you understand that Adam and Eve are in the garden. And then he gives them a rule. He gives them direction. In the garden, man, I'm teaching this. In the garden, they had no reason. Let me go back. In the garden, they had no need for a savior because there was no sin. How cool is that? So they didn't know God as a savior. They just knew God as like the, like everything. Like they they were they were co-partners of God. They walked with God. It was crazy. They in fact, when God made them in Genesis 1 and 26, my first verse tonight. The Bible says then God said let us make man in our image. Now that word us, if I had more time, which I will within the weeks, I'll unpackage who he was talking to. Let us make man in our image. Okay, the Holy Spirit was present and God being all sovereign spoke and said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. I'm going to let that settle in for you. Let us make man in our image. So let me ask you the question. Who do you look like? Answer me, please. Who do you look like? Our father. You look like your father. So God established genetic code. And according to your likeness, I've used this many times. When I look at Eden, my Eden, my little Eden, and even Kaylin, I see... I see likeness in them of me and my wife because she's built by the genetic code and our DNA. So God is saying, let us make Irma in our image and let us make her in our likeness. Oh, you're not getting it. Come on. Let us make Xavier in our image and let us make him in our likeness. Let them have dominion. Look at the very first thing that God gives you. Well, he gives you free freedom of choice, which is the main gift. But then he says, let me give you dominion. Let them have dominion. We talked about dominion. The word dominion is to govern and rule over one thing. The kingdom, right? We broke it down. It's one king over a domain. So if he's the king, he's giving you dominion. He's making you also a co-partner in the Garden of Eden, he's saying, you're going to have dominion. And then he says, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and mm -hmm. over all the cattle, over all of the earth. Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there. So if he gives you dominion over the fish of the sea, who is the governor of the fish of the sea? You are. 
I'm gonna mess with your theology. Okay, and if you have if you have any concerns, you can email me later, and I'll give you the wrong email. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but you have been given dominion. When a king releases a word, listen to this. This is good. Don't miss it. Stay, 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 stay focused. When a king releases a word, he could never retract from it. That's right. When a king decrees a word, he can never backtrack and say, never mind. Amen. So reg you, Lord. regardless of regardless of the mess that you think you created in your life, regardless of where you where you came from and the turmoil you had to go through, you're still made in the image. You're still made in his likeness. This is so good. You still have dominion. Jesus because of Jesus yes Adam abdicated his authority and he gave his dominion to the serpent he gave it up as we read two weeks ago because they bit from the forbidden apple okay so he gave up his authority he gave up his dominion so because the king being God says I have to fulfill my word so that the earth can have a governor so the earth can have somebody to, to take dominion over it remember this is not what I'm saying the Bible says mm -hmm. that you have dominion over all the earth dad over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth everything on this earth who is to have dominion over it somebody talk to me Wait. Let's say that again. We. We are in charge of what happens on this earth. Hey Amen. That's right. Do I just got Sister Irma tonight or, or do I got some, some, some amens out there? Yeah. We are responsible for what happens on this earth. Yes. So Jesus is sent. He is the son of God. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son yes he gave his only son that was the seed of God man and he planted Jesus on this earth on the womb of this earth he for God so loved the world and by the way this is your homework that word world in this context is not talking about like the world the way you think of it's talking about systems it's talking about the cosmos it's talking about the governments somebody hear me for God so loved the systems that he's established on this earth he's established the cosmos on this earth he loved them that he put his he put his son Jesus and he, and he sent him with dominion. And he sent him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he placed him here so that for whosoever would believe in him will not die. In other words, will not die like Adam and Eve died in the Eden. That's right. Somebody hear me. You need revelation for this. You can't yes, hear me. Lord. You can't hear me physically and get it you have to hear me in the spirit when Adam bit the apple when Eve bit the apple God said you you, you died to me you no longer have my mind you no longer function like me because you've given up dominion but yes. I'm sent the second Adam who is Jesus that's right and that's where John 3 16 is he gave his only begotten son Hallelujah. so that for whoever believes in him so that is when that is why I tell you when you believe in him and accept Jesus as your savior and you're baptized in his name come on somebody there is no other name where must you be where where you must be baptized in you must be baptized in the name of Jesus yes that is the authority that is the, right. the government of the kingdom mhm mm and when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, hence why we taught weeks about the Holy Spirit, it's because the Holy Spirit is now 
the authority. The Holy Spirit is the key of the kingdom that he gives to you so that you can take dominion and so that you can take your place as a governor of this earth, so that you can take place as a representative of his kingdom here on earth. That's If right. somebody doesn't have the Holy Spirit, they're not a kingdom citizen. There's no way. Mm -hmm. They don't have a citizenship unless they have been born again. I got two hot, two head nods. That's right. I got some eyes that are open and I see some black screens, but I think you, 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 you. Jesus. So, so, so Jesus being your Lord, the Holy Spirit is the authority, the anointing, the key, all in one. Manifestations are different, but they're all one. I'll teach you that too. He comes to establish a kingdom. Now listen to this. In Genesis 1 and 26, just right there, it says that, that he's making us in our image, in his image, in his likeness, to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds. You're like, man, how's this going to benefit me? I hope you're not bored with what I'm telling you tonight. Because you're not gonna, you're gonna realize tonight how much authority you have. You're gonna realize how much dominion you have. You're gonna realize why the devil hates your guts. You're gonna That's realize right. why the devil is after you every minute of your life. You're gonna get it. Right now I'm talking about the fish of the sea and the birds in the air and the cattle. You're like, I don't even own a, a cow, man. But you're the governor. You're responsible yeah. for what happens on this earth. But listen to scripture. It never says that you have dominion over man. Mm -hmm. um, I want that to settle in for a second. It never says that you have dominion over man. Religion establishes that dominion is man telling you what to do. That's right. Now there's leaders, there's ministers, there's pastors there's, that we honor and we respect that are led and guided by God. Come on, somebody. Am I teaching this? Yes. This is going to get rid of some church hurt, if anybody ever had it. Men, when I say men, men and women, were never created to rule over you. That's right. Because in the eyes of God, we're all the same. Yes. Can somebody hear me teach this tonight? Yes. Now, religion comes and establishes this. For instance, in order to go into the holies of holies, okay? In order to go into the holies of holies, the religious people, the religious leaders were the only ones that were allowed to go in there. Nobody else was allowed to go in there because they weren't holier than thou. This is what they began to establish and as it relates to helping people or, 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 or they were feeling the disconnection that we talked about. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were feeling the disconnection of man and, 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 you know, man and God. So some people were like, well, we got to sacrifice, you know, we got to sacrifice animals. We got to sacrifice, you know, the lambs. We got to sacrifice goats and offer the blood. I mean, we don't do that today because who is the sacrificial lamb of God? Jesus. Thank God that we don't show up, Xavier, to church and there's a bloodshed right there, sir. Because even that law was, was, was fulfilled by Jesus. So religion says, hey, look, you got to do all of this. So what they do is they take dominion over you. They start telling That's you, right. you're sinful. You don't look a certain way. You don't act a certain yeah. way. So you don't have the right to go into the holies of holies. But when Jesus yeah. was crucified, when Jesus was on the cross, And when he said it is finished, and of mm -hmm. course you, you, the the, story, the the Bible says that there there was lightning and there was sound and it, the, the, there was an earthquake and it began to shake. The very first thing that tore that that that, that tore was the veil. The veil in the temple was torn, and that is when the Scripture writes that now it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a Jew, whether you're Greek, whether you're a Gentile. Now you have every access to go into the holies of holies because of what Jesus had fulfilled. Thank you, Lord. Because he established his kingdom. Yes. Now I'm going to take a moment here and park this 
I'm going to park this, this car and I'm going to ask, does everybody understand what we're saying? Uh, le- up to yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, and don't, don't ask yes. yes to make me feel good. Just, I, I want to make sure you understand what, what, what I'm teaching you. We're, we're, yeah. we're simply on Genesis 1 and 26 that God is giving you dominion. Amen. He's giving you dominion. Now, this statement documents the most important declaration ever made regarding mankind. The Bible calls you calls us mankind because we're a kind of man. We're a mankind. So he's he's relating to both men and women. It declares the motivation of God, the nature of God, the essence of God, the purpose of God, the mandate of God. And the sound of God, just in that scripture. One in Genesis one and twenty six. Help me, Lord. It reveals and declares His motivation, His nature, His essence, His purpose, His mandate, and His sound for the purpose for mankind. The word dominion in the Hebrew word. Let me teach you a little bit of Hebrew. I think it's important for you to get it like this. The Hebrew word for dominion is mamlaka, M-A-M, so Mary, Apple, Mary, mamlaka, L-A-K-A-H, Google it. It's translated as kingdom. It also is translated as sovereign rule. And it also has a derivative that's connected to it. And it's defined as royal power. So when you go back and read Genesis 1 and 26, he says, let them have mamlaka. Let them have sovereign rule. Let them have royal power. Come on, somebody. Somebody's got to hear me. Let them have the kingdom rule. So in essence, mankind is created to have rulership in this earth. Now, a teaching mentor of mine, Pastor Ron, sure all of you have heard of Pastor Ron Carpenter. He says it best. He says, when somebody says God is in control, obviously we say that, and sometimes we say it out of context. When something is out of our hands, when something, when something that we don't know, when something that we feel we don't control, which we do control, he said it this way. When people say God is in control, that is code to say, I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't know the stance. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So whenever, you know, I'm sure I'll say it to behind the pulpit, God is in control. You're going to catch me on that and say, hey, when you when you say that, you're really saying, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. In other words, you have so much dominion. You have so much of God's kingdom rule and royal power over you. You have no idea how much power you have. So the reason why I I teach you the kingdom is so that it eliminates, it eliminates the fight. It eliminates that you feel defeated by the enemy. It will eliminate your opponent. It will eliminate all of the things that you think you have no control of. You actually have control because God is giving you dominion to take control over them. My wife is giving me one of these virtual claps because she knows as long as she says amen, I'm good, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me. She's been hearing me teach this for a long time. So for instance, the Bible calls you. The Bible calls you to pray for the sick and to heal them. Amen. Oh, man. The Bible says that you shall lay your hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. Amen. So if the sick aren't recovering, God is in control. You're not, you're, you're not doing enough, you're not doing enough praying. That's the key to the kingdom. You don't need a ministry license. You don't need to go to Bible college. Both are good. You just need to take an assumed position that you have been made in his image and his likeness and that you have 
dominion. You have authority. You've been full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're baptized in the name of Jesus. You have the authority and the government of the kingdom to walk into any hospital room, to walk into any situation and not say God is in control, but to walk in there and say, I have been given all authority and dominion in the name of Jesus to declare you healed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That is a citizen of the kingdom. That is a, a, a kingdom citizen who steps in and takes dominion of the situation. When you take dominion, is you're taking sovereign rule. You're walking into a mess and you're turning it into a message. You walk into a test and you're turning it into a testimony. Come on, somebody. When you understand this and you can get your religious mindset of maybe the things you've been taught, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough. I am not perfect enough. I'm not, uh, I'm not eloquent. I can't teach. I don't know. That is a religious mindset. They can do it. The pastor can do it. The minister can do it. That lady <laughs> prays a lot. He prays a lot. No, God is calling you, which is why you got to teach the kingdom the right way. Because God has called you. Yes, you, Sister Irma. Yes, you, Irma Serrano. God has called you. Amen. I believe that God has anointed us. Amen. That even Amen. in a coffee shop, yes, somebody can, a friend of yours can begin to talk to you about situations in their life, and you can begin to speak life because of the position that you have assumed as a son and a daughter of Amen. the king. Amen. Yes. So in Xavier's situation, because it's a great situation, as he's coming into the knowledge of the kingdom, so now he looks at his situation, he looks at the you know his his diagnosis, if you will, he looks at what they say he has, and he's like, that doesn't, that's not in accordance to the will of God. That's right. The will of God says that I am healed. I I, I appreciate you, Doc, but that is not the report I believe. Because Amen. I have kingdom dominion. I am a son of the living God. And I take, once again, rule over my body. And by Amen. his stripes, I am healed. So Amen. that is going to show something. But I don't stand on that. Yes. Am I, just, am I just making this for a good moment of preaching? Or is this, is this are you getting good. it? Yeah. It's good. So Thank dominion you, has been given to you. In other words, let me say it this way. There's scripture for that, and I'll give it to you. So, you're waiting on heaven, and heaven is waiting on you. That's right. You're waiting on God, mom, and God is waiting on you. God is saying, I, as a king, gave you dominion. Yes. And I'm going to stand on my word. Amen. You want me to go and to heal Blanca, but I'm waiting on you. Put your yes. hands on this body so that yes. I can activate the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can you imagine? Let me cast some vision in Eden X. Can you imagine when you get the, mm -hmm. the when you get the revelation of this kingdom? Because you're gonna get it. Can you imagine when you begin to operate under the kingdom rule? Can you imagine when we have a Tuesday night testimonials? Uh, gathering when you're telling me you have no idea how the Lord is using me because I have assumed position respectfully and in protocol and I'm doing things the way that God wants me to do because I've assumed my position as a citizen of the kingdom. I Amen. wish, can you imagine what that would look like? Can you imagine that simply because you've assumed this understanding and this knowledge and this revelation the things that used to hurt you the things that used to tear you down the things that used to put you in depression for days in your room the things that used to uh you know that used to that used to haunt your mind and your thoughts now that you've taken dominion now that you've taken your mandate now that you are living royal power and sovereign rule anointed by the holy spirit can you imagine how you defeat the enemy mm -hmm. so good 
And how you can face your fear, how you can face the enemy of your life, and you can begin to speak to it, whereas before you used to run from it. Now you can speak to it because of your because of your because of the rule that you have and the sovereignty that God is giving you and the dominion yeah. that God is giving you. Think yes. about it. I just want I wanted to settle here for a second. This is the kind of disciple I'm building. That doesn't mean you have bad days, that you won't have bad days. That doesn't mean you your body won't be afflicted. That just means that your approach is a complete different approach. That just means that you speak different. Come on, somebody. Right. That just means yes. that you stand up differently. Yes. That just means that you look at this as just another circumstance. Yeah. Because you've assumed your position. And God gives us dominion for the framework yes. of everything that we did, that we're going to do in this earth to fulfill to bring fulfillment to God's original design for mankind. When I was establishing Eden X, Eden X has lived in my spirit for years. I, 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 I still dream about it, but I used to dream about it a lot in my spirit. And I was, you know, I, I knew that the Lord had given me Eden and then X for experience. I said, man, the Lord gave me this, his ministry. And I said, I need a tagline. I need something, you know, that is going to explain what this ministry is about. And of course, I came up with a place you find fulfillment, uh, purpose, fulfillment, and freedom through a spirit-led experience. But before that, I had in my journal written Eden X, restoring man back to his original design. I still feel that that's the mission of this ministry. Amen. And God is calling us to bring people back to reconciliation to God. Right, amen. And we're bringing people back that have been abused and we're restoring amen. them back to the original design. That's right. So when the amen. abuse, the trauma that used to hurt them, now it becomes a scar. And they can turn yeah. around and say, this thing doesn't make me cry anymore. On the contrary, I use it to expand the kingdom. Amen. And people's amen. bodies that have been afflicted with sickness, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, cancer. I mean, I can just go on and on. I have this vision and this dream under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this ministry is going to encounter people, hospitals and rehabilitation centers and drug addicts and, and, and all kinds of, you know, different, different, uh, what do you call it? Different vices that people are attached to that, that being in this, in this, in this environment, being in this, in this uh, atmosphere that those chains would break off. That is, that is the mission. That is what I still dream about. That's what I pray on. Amen. And the only way Thank to achieve Lord. that is that we assume not that that the only way we get there is not that we assume a membership of a church, but that we assume our citizenship in heaven. That we understand who is governing us, who is leading us, and who is using us, and by which rule we're coming from and which word we're using. Amen. Amen. And we're using the word of God. Amen. Okay? So Genesis 2 and 15 explains exactly what happened. Man lost dominion. We, we spoke about that. Genesis 2 and 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden and tended him to keep it. For those of you that might have questioned my Adam and Eve were sent in the garden to tend it. Verse 16, and the Lord commanded the man saying, every tree of the garden you may freely eat of. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For on that day you eat it, you shall surely die. That is in scripture. Read it, Genesis 2 and 15. Okay. So gave him the garden. He said, everything here is yours, Iris. Just don't touch this tree. Doesn't that sound kind of like the tithe? Everything that you make is yours. But you see, this 10% is mine. Yes. I'm going to teach it to you. God tithes himself stuff. Yes. We have problems when we touch his stuff. That's a kingdom key. You want blessing. Yes. You want blessing, but you're touching his tithe. It's never been yes. yours. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Don't get mad at me. God said, if you touch that tree, you're going to die. 
because it's not made for you. But I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you tend it. I'm gonna yeah. let you look after it. I'm gonna let you stare at it every day, but you're not gonna touch it. Mm-hmm. Everything else you can have. 90% of the garden, you can have it. 90% of your economy, you can use it. No problem. I'll bless you. But that 10%, don't touch it. Because that's mine. Yes. Yes. You can stare at it. You can wish you had it. Mm-hmm. You can apply it to something that, man, I need it for this. That's mine, God says. Don't mess with it. It's going to double it. Yeah. And this is not about tithing tonight, but this is about don't touch what belongs to him. That's right. I like the, the that's right from Irma tonight. Amen. <laughs> so mankind's failure through disobedience to his creator resulted in the loss of dominion over the earth. He lost his kingdom. He lost his mandate. His mm-hmm. gift of divine power. When man disobeyed, he lost the kingdom. He lost mm-hmm. dominion over the earth. But yeah. Jesus had to be sent here to reestablish dominion. Yes. Man, I've used this word before, abdicated his authority, his, his dominion, and gave it back to Satan. Here you go. Because all it took, Irma Serrano, was for the serpent to just suggest it to Eve. Mm-hmm. It took. Mm-hmm. So, now listen to what I wrote. The emptiness and search for man is not for religion it's not for religion heaven is what man is searching for as long as you continue to search for religion you're going to be empty as long as you're part of religion you're going to be empty yep But as long as you are full of heaven, which is the kingdom, you're going to be satisfied. This is why why religion could never satisfy the deep hunger in the heart of man. Mm -hmm. The hunger of the man, uh, excuse me, the hunger of the human heart is for the lost kingdom. I knew personally that there was more. There was more to this, this journey. There was more to just go in and congregating every Sunday. That's right. There yes. is, there's more to just go in to midweek Wednesdays and Tuesdays. Yes. Yes. There's more. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know who I lost there, but I love you. <laughs> amen. Amen. You, 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 you can't be satisfied just with uh-uh. the routine. I'm not, and I'm not discrediting us. We make the effort. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But you chose to be a part of this. God chose it for you. God put you here with a desire to show you his kingdom. Yes. He did. Amen. You're different. Amen. Amen. Yes, he did. He wants you to experience his kingdom. Yes. In everything that you do in your life. Everything. Yes. I love church. I'm never going to stop doing church. Trust me. But what happens on a Monday? What happens on a Tuesday? Yes. What happens on a Wednesday? If you don't have your mandate, if you don't have your purpose defined, if you do not have your position in the kingdom defined you're just going to be routine you're going to go to heaven I promise you but you're going to be on this earth waiting for him literally you're going to be on this earth waiting for God to come you're just going to wait for, for you to go to heaven you're going to live your life live it here. He, but Jesus chose 12 he said, you 12 are important to me because we have to establish the kingdom on this earth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward just a little bit because I really want to touch on something for the last 10 minutes. 
The power of religion lies in its ability to serve as a substitute for the kingdom. And it hinders mankind from pursuing the genuine answer to his dilemma. Religion will never give you the answer to your dilemma. Never. Mm-mm. Because the re- because religion gives you no keys, Xavier. There's no keys in the religion in the religious sector, if you will. I respect. We all respect. Don't take this the wrong way. Don't 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 run and say, man. You know, it's, it's against religion. I didn't say that. What I'm telling you is that because I have it so clear, you you're gonna have it so clear. You're gonna say, God, in your kingdom, in your kingdom. I have all the answers. Let me give you scripture for that. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things. Thank you, Lord. Mean? All things Oof. shall be added unto you. Everything right. that you need. Yes. Amen. Amen. Is Thank found you, in the kingdom. Everything. Let me say that again. Thank Everything that you need is found yes. in the kingdom everything that's right there is a key to unlock anything that you are looking for that is in accordance to the will of god everything that you're looking for you. Daddy, is found in the kingdom mm-hmm. you can't find it in me Thank you, Jesus. i i'm sorry you can't find it in, in, in my and in, in, in me you're just not gonna find it you're gonna mm-hmm. find it in the kingdom yes so dr monroe said this religion preoccupies man until he finds a kingdom Uh (laughs) so remember the enemy of your life and of my life he he'll go to church with you he's got no problem doing that trust me yeah he sure does not in the bay area and other places okay not in texas (laughs) i wish it wasn't in the bay area (laughs) but but he he shows up he's got no problem doing that (laughs) he has no problem doing that you know why because he's preoccupying people with religion he's going to preoccupy them with that and as long as you don't know the kingdom he's not worried about you yeah as well long said. as you don't know the kingdom he's not worried about you yeah yes. you'll, 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 you'll put up a fight I'm sure you have a prayer life I'm sure all of that is good absolutely but remember when the Holy Spirit sent Jesus to the wilderness he didn't Satan's is the one who showed up to tempt God. It wasn't demons, it wasn't witches or warlocks. It was Satan himself that showed up to tempt Jesus. In other words, Satan's like, all right, little demons, all right, little witches, all right, little Darth Vaders, you guys are gonna stay behind. It's me and him, because that's what I call the clash of the kingdoms. Because he knew that Jesus was showing up to establish a kingdom on this earth and by the way Satan knows because Satan was the brightest he was the most beautiful angel that lived in heaven with God so if anybody knows the kingdom other than Jesus it was Satan and Satan said I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna try to negotiate with Jesus to see if he'll trade me kingdoms I just need him to bow down and I'll give him all of the kingdoms of the earth. You'll read in scripture in the book of Acts. He took him to the edge and he said, you can have all those kingdoms. You can have all the worlds. Notice the world. You can have all the systems. You can control education. You can control medicine. You can control uh, everything. The finance. You can control everything that I have control of. If you'll bow down to me. And Jesus responded that man shall not live off of bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God in other words he was saying you're speaking to me and you want to make a trade you want to make a transaction I'm you're regarding me as the son of, of God I'm regarding myself as the son of man I'm letting you know that I am all God and all flesh standing right in front of you Jesus I have Jesus. I have I have brought the kingdom and when I speak so everything that proceeds out of my mouth is going to come to pass are you getting that so religion is what man does until he finds a kingdom religion prepares man to leave the earth (laughs) 
It's not bad. But the kingdom empowers man to dominate the earth. Amen. Amen. So so stop trying to get to heaven so fast. Amen. Why don't you just bring heaven down to earth? That's Amen. right. Amen. It's, you desire the streets of gold, man, but I'm not ready to go to heaven. There's so much work to do on this earth, and I have to bring heaven down. I believe, amen, once again, I believe that, that heaven touching earth is the experience of the kingdom. How many can say amen? Amen. Amen. So religion wants you to escape the earth, and the kingdom is about impacting the earth and bringing influence and change to it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna land this plane because I don't give you way too much, and then you're like, man, this is a lot. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, just on this parable of the sower, I'm gonna tell you what kind of ground you are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how important you are. And again, I'm not big on attendance numbers and things like that. But let me tell you something. I said it to the discipleship school. Remember, I don't know if you remember. I said, we started with this many and it'll end up being like this. Mm -hmm. This this is taking work. It's going to take work. It's going to take you cooking dinner and having a, a headphone on. It's going to take you driving home and having me on Bluetooth. Like, it's going to take you all of that. You're going to have to work for this. You're going to have to pay a price for this. Some people are not going to find this as, as, as interesting. Some people are going to be like, it's too much work. And that's okay. But I'm going to work with those that are saying, I want to be a disciple of the kingdom. I need to know how to set myself free. I need to know what I what keys I have in my hand, in my disposal, and how to set myself free from things. I want to know the plan of God for my life. I don't want to play games. I don't want to play hey, church. Hey. I don't want to play little brother, little sister at church. Nice kubaya. <laughs> I, I, I want to I want to I want to I want to bring them to earth. I got I got a generation that I got to save. I got a son and a daughter that needs to hear the gospel. I got grandkids that need to hear the Amen. gospel. Amen. I'm not trying to mess around. This is the kind of people I'm talking to tonight. These are the people that need to be here tonight. Amen. This is a one and done. I'm not up and down. I'm not a roller coaster Christian. I want to serve the Lord. I want right. to serve the Lord, and if the kingdom is being taught, Amen. the kingdom is being presented to me, and if I'm given this opportunity, it's because, God, you want me to hear this message, okay? And and, and, and let me give you scripture for that, because I'm not just I'm not just throwing it out there to throw it, but I'm going to have you, Irma, read this for me. Little Irma, Matthew chapter 13. We're going we're gonna to land this plane in about five minutes, but I want, I want to make sure I give you this, because this is important. <laughs> I was, you know, again, sharing a little bit before we started to, to Xavier and I was telling him, man, I appreciate you. This is, this is, this is a sacrifice coming every week and hearing it. I even text him on the side. I'm like, hey, bear with me. You know, it'll, it'll come to you. It just, I wish I was in your position. I wish that when I came to Christianity, brother, I wish that somebody taught me this, but I know that God's plans are, are, are perfect and God yeah. has planned to, for my journey, God had a plan to, you know, to, to lead me up to this point. But my life Amen. makes no sense today. I don't care what man thinks about me. <laughs> I don't care what man, you know, what judgments they have over me. I don't care what observations they have over me. I'm free and clear. I know my mandate. I know my mission. I know that I'm called for such a time as this. I know that I'm a citizen of heaven. I know that my mission and my vision is to bring the kingdom of God to this earth and to teach it to people. So that people can be set free once and for all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Amen. started with 3,000. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sister Nicole. There was 3,000 of them, and then it narrowed down to 12. Thank you, Father. Amen. And this is what happens. Amen. This is, very, this is going to be very interesting for you. We're going to end this kind of on the, on, the, on the, not on the, how to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you on a cliffhanger. Because the parable of the sower is going to tell you exactly what's happening here. I want you to read Matthew 13, little Irma, mm -hmm. 4, all the way to, to uh, 
all the way to 13. So it's a few of them, but I want you to read it. And when I stop you, I'm, I'm going to do it because I want to explain something. It won't be too long, but I want you to get this, okay? Okay, so starting at verse 4. Yes. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Stop and right the birds. There. How many seeds? S- some. Somebody say some. 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 Not some. all seed. Need yeah. you, I need you to pay attention, please. If you're going to hear something, hear this. This is the last part. This is the, the cherry on top. Some seed. Go for it. Go ahead. That's right. And the birds came and devoured them. Some mm-hmm. fell stone on stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Stop. But when the sun... So there was no what? No depth. If you have no depth, it doesn't matter what seed I sow into you. Mm -hmm. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Stop right there. And some fell. If you have no root, you're going to wither away. That's right. This is not going to be important for you. Yes. This is number two, number three, number five on your list. I'll get to it if I can. If I have That's time, right. I'll if I have time, yeah. if I have time, I'll, I'll hear it. Mm-hmm. If, if I can get free from what I'm doing, I'll make it. That's mm-hmm. right. I'm going to teach you hard today. I'm going to hit you a little hard. Okay, then verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Ah. But others... Stop right there. Some fell among thorns. So remember, when you think about the ground, all of this is talking about the bed of your heart. So if you got thorns in your heart, that's going to choke up the seed. I know I'm talking to myself. Wow. Jesus. Good. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Do what you got to do, Father. Heal what you got to heal, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Control of my baby. Take control of my baby. Amen. 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 Some a hundredfold, <laughs> some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. <clears throat> and then the purpose of the parables. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it had been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Right but to them... Why, why do you talk to them like that? Why do you talk to them like that? And you talk to us this way. And then he said, to you it has been given. What? But to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him more will be given, and he will, will have abundance. But whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. 